Welcome back to the VST channel. This here is the Vivo X100 Ultra and I've been testing this phone camera wise in the last few weeks. I'm also using this as my main daily driver since almost one month right now so that I'm really able to share my really honest feedback with you when I'm ready to produce the full review. And as part of this process, of course, I need to test some very standard things like benchmark and performance. So in this video today, we are gonna be putting the Vivo X100 Ultra through 3 Mark Extreme Stress Test, also Gigabench, Amplitude, some other tests, just to see what is gonna happen, what are the results that we are getting from this phone. And in the next few days, I'm gonna be also doing the one hour extreme CPU thermal throttling torture test just to see if this phone will break. All right, but guys, let me just try to give some context. Right now, it is 27 Celsius inside. I'm using AC because outside it's only like 35. And I'm gonna show you also the temperature that I'm getting right now on the phone. It's like 32, right, around the camera. So 32, 33, 32 Celsius, it's quite okay. Also, if you're here for the first time and you are not aware with the Vivo X100 Ultra, besides the fact of course having 200 megapixel on the zoom camera using a Samsung Isotel sensor and of course using also a one inch main Sony sensor 50 megapixel dam yeah you probably also don't know or you probably know that it uses the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 not the 8 as Gen 3 this is the real deal we have the 8 cores here big little four cluster setup we have one big core running at 3.3 gigahertz then we have two cores and almost three gigahertz and our three cores at 315 and two cores at 226 this is the family the cortex x4 and then we have a720 and then a520 also it is using the adreno 750 it is just important for me to share this information the display is of course also a high-end one 3200 by 1440 it's using the highest available refresh rate also very important for this test it is using 12 gigabytes lpddr5x and it's using ufs4 as a storage so it is a monster monster phone and what we want to check in this video really is how well it's going to endure some of the very standard tests that i'm putting all the phones but before i start i want to set the scene so first things first i'm going to go into system management and show you the update that i'm using it's the latest stable one it's 2366 ga14 you know when you click here in the trial version then there's going to be also sometimes newer updates uh, eventually they will end up also on the stable channel right now there are no more trial updates and something else that is very important if i click and battery i'm using the balance mode so if i go to boost mode it's going to improve the performance of course it's going to consume more power generate more heat uh, probably even put the phone into a worse position in terms of throttling so i'm not going to use the boost mode i'm also not going to use the battery saver mode i'm going to use the balance mode to be able to see what is happening there okay so this is something important and also i wanted to show you when i go inside the display uh, you're going to be able to see that i'm indeed running the highest resolution this is the uhd resolution here okay sharper display has resolution and i'm also using the highest screen refresh rate there is something called smart adaptation where the phone decides um, what to use on 120 what to use on 16 now i'm using the highest one and also i've selected some of the applications to be really able to go to 120. so without any further ado, guys i'm going to put the d not to stir because again this is now here my main driver and we're going to be starting with the first application the first application is going to be the 3d mark and in this scenario i'm going to run the wildlife extreme stress test so what this thing will do it will run 20 times and in these 20 times we're going to get different scores and at the end of this test we're going to be able to compare the highest result and the lowest result and then the tool is going to use the highest one and the lowest one to calculate the gap and the stability okay this is really really important so please enjoy this video and if you are here for the first time you might want to also support the channel if you like things like this then be my friend support the channel thank you so much please continue all right i'm gonna speed up the video i'm also going to be doing some intermittent measurements every five six rounds i'm gonna measure to see what is happening and um, all the time i'm gonna be aiming here for this point where apparently am i able to get some of the highest stamps so it was already almost 35 let's see how much we're gonna get in the end um yeah buckle up and let's start we are already at the end of round number five 
and we are measuring 40 celsius so only two celsius increase for the first five rounds now let's keep going and see how much higher we can get we're now finalizing round number 10 it's time to check the temps again of oh, 42.3 the first time 41.7 so another two celsius increase for the other five rounds which is actually not so bad oh, some of those phones that i've been testing through the years are reaching 50 51 52 celsius so it's interesting to see how vivo decided to implement the uh, thermal management for the vivo x 100 ultra but now let's keep going and i'm gonna do one final measurement at the end and of course share with you the results we are now finalizing round number 19 so it's interesting to see how much we are gonna get 42.4 this is rather surprising 42.4 i was rather expecting here to get something like another increase with two celsius almost getting high as 45 celsius but no 42 43 so i do believe uh, this is a clear approach from vivo to make sure that the phone will not really try to go full performance mode and of course then at some point really overheat it and throttle which means hopefully that the sustained performance is gonna be better now i'm not sure i need still to check all the numbers I'd rather expect to have a nice surprise in terms of presenter stability. This is again, I'm uh, reminding you of the calculation between the highest and the lowest loops from all of these 20 loops scores. So we are going to find out very, very soon. Let's keep watching. And we are now about to find out the results. Just before we go there, I want to show you it is 25.7 inside with the AC. So, mm hmm. The phone doesn't feel really so hot in the hand, but it's time for me now to check the results. Unfortunately, the stability rating is rather low, 60%. Why is that so well? The highest best loop score is 4,505. The lowest loop score is 2,700 almost. And by the way, this is the performance graph. So we started very high with 4,000. Then there was another drop here, the first drop. Then a bit more stable until round number 11, 12, another drop and then very stable performance. So honestly, this type of graph is good because it will result in optimized sustained performance in a real world scenario. For example, you're playing something like Genshin Impact for let's say two hours. Why? Well, this is the most powerful chip on earth, right? So you don't really need like 89% from its performance. Of course, you might need it and then you can use an external coolers whatsoever, but even running with this amount of performance will give you hopefully some nice results. Now let's check the performance range. We are comparing here the frame rates from the best and the worst loops and it's pretty stable in the beginning with some drops here and there. The battery, it's very important to check the indication. So battery was 67%, it dropped down to 57%, only 10%, which is I believe totally acceptable for 20 loops. The temperature increase also very much correct inside the SOC um, aligned with what I got with my temp gun. Only 10 degree celsius increase from 33 to 43 the frame rate 12 fps to 32 fps and um, this is the battery and the frame rate so i'm just going to put everything here so you can check it so this is what happens with the battery this here with the temperature as you can see a rather gradual increase of the temperature and then the frame rate with a more severe drop in the beginning so this is in fact what i'm getting with the 3d mark pause the video guys and let me know what thing down below the phone is still using 39 so i'm gonna give the phone some time to recover and then we are going to be starting gigabench so i never start a gigabench on this phone Phone. so let's wait 10-15 minutes allow the phone to recover and then I'm going to continue with the King Bench 6 it's time to check the temperature after 20 minutes of rest I would say it is 32 32.5 which is kind of normal so i am gonna run the Geekbench 6 for the first time ever on my Vivo X100 Ultra what do you think will this score something like the result I was getting on the S24 Ultra of course, sharing the same 8th Gen 3 chip, or will the Vivo X100 Ultra really blow our minds and score even higher? Well, the S24 Ultra is not among the highest 
8th Gen 3 scoring phones. There are some gaming phones like the Red Magic and etc. that are doing wonders there, but yeah, let's please allow us to be surprised from the Vivo. So we are going to find out in a few seconds. All right, we are about to find out the results and measure some temps, so 36.5, I would say, again, a slow increase of two to three Celsius, nothing really so concerning. Single core score 2,166 and the multi-core score 6,450. This is how much I was getting. And you can check, this is your device, a single score comparison with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Scoring just about the same, I would say, the S24 Plus, and then you can just see the age and two devices, and etc. But again, the S24 Ultra is not among the highest top scores with the age and three. Now, let's check the multi core score, rather interesting. The S24 Ultra apparently baselining getting a bit higher than the Vivo X100 Ultra, uh, but I would say that this is all within kind of the baseline. So it is comparing pretty much as we expected to compare. Now, I am going to give the phone some time to rest before I start the N22 benchmark. And this is one of the most recognizable out there benchmarks. So of course I need to run that one. I'm gonna test it. But first thing first, we are gonna wait a bit for uh, the temperature to go down and then also run this benchmark. And if you're just tuning in right now, guys, make sure to stay subscribed to our channel. And if you're not subscribed, sub and yes we are going to continue now all right guys some minutes for the phone to rest and we can now measure 32 which i do believe is kind of normal so i am going to resume the phone uh, like i promised i'm gonna right now run the m22 benchmark so guys pause the video and put your prognosis there but don't cheat all right just don't watch yet just put it on pause and put your guess in the comments or tell me, yeah, I was really able to guess something like 80% of the score. I was really accurate, like 100%. Let's just see how much will the Vivo X100 get in the M2 benchmark. So I'm gonna fast forward and then at the end, check the results together with you. All right, guys, the antidote test has just finished and I'm about to measure 42, guys. 42 Celsius, very, very much surprising. I expected that the Vivo will just aggressively perform as we've seen in the Xiaomi. You know how it goes, but no, it seems that they kind of rather implemented um, a bit more restrictive thermal management, which is, again, you're not getting the best out of the best non-stop because it's just impossible without the best cooling on earth or let's say additional supplementary cooling, but you're getting a nice performance over time, which might result into higher or better sustained performance over, of course, a longer run. Now, the Vivo X100 Ultra scored 2 million, so uh, 43, 4K on the CPU, 875K on the GPU, 350 on the MAM, 343 on the UX guys. And again, the overall increase in the temperature is only 9.3 degrees Celsius. The battery dropped with only 8%, which is not that bad at all. Now, there are a few more tests. I want to put the phone 39. I'm going to give... Again, 15 minutes rest uh, for the Vivo X100 Ultra and then we are going to continue with the CPDT. This is the cross-platform test. And then guys, uh, I'm gonna finalize uh, my video with the GFX bench. So let's just cool down the phone and we're gonna continue. The phone has rested again and we are now back to 32 and I'm going to start the CPDT. Now, why do I like this test? Well, because it's showing very, very simple results for the things that are important besides, of course, performance of the SOC. Things like the sequential write, the sequential read, the random write, random read, and etc. which is actually what the phone is doing. It's taking a file and then copy this file from a section to another section, thus measuring the speed. And that's important because when you copy a huge amount of data, right, on the internal memory, a lot of things are utilized. Of course, RAM, some part of this goes to the RAM, some part of this, of course, is measured against the storage, the EEPROM, the UFS 4.0, and those are the results, by the way. So we're getting 821 megabytes per second for the write on 1.65 
gigabytes per second for the breed, which is huge. Then you can see all the other results. And now the phone has rested again. It's time to measure the temp. 34, I would say, okay, 34.8, still going to be considered as a resting temperature. We now have 26 inside, so again, the AC is running for the whole day. And what I'm gonna do right now, guys, I'm going to start the GFX bench, right? And then start and run the benchmark. Now, the moment you start this bench, you need to make sure uh, to allocate 600 megabytes of data. So it requires data to be downloaded. So I'm gonna select all the tests, all right? Like you see here, and without any further ado, I'm gonna start them all. And then at the end, we're gonna be exploring the results. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope that you appreciate efforts like this, me taking this phone and really putting it through some standard test benchmarks. Again, don't forget to check this week later where I'm gonna be doing the one hour extreme CPU thermal throttling torture test. Yeah, you know how it goes. And of course, there's gonna be more performance testing of this phone. Like for example, playing games while being on a video call with another phone because I have proven to myself at least that this really breaks the phones, it's crazy in terms of how much resources are utilized. And sometimes, yeah, they either go outside of uh, the game like Crush or something else. But let me fast forward, guys, and we're gonna be analyzing the results when ready. And we are done with the GFX Bench. And I can tell you, the phone feels wow. Wow. I was about to say that the phone feels very hot. 52 degrees guys this is what i'm talking about now this benchmark for sure for sure is giving really a lot of stress for the vivo x100 ultra but the good news is that the vivo x100 ultra was able to finish the test i think just the test alone is something like 20 25 minutes and we can see uh, for all these tests 54 fps 29 fps 64 fps 78 fps as you can see, on the test has been done, and I'm now gonna hit the uh, compare, and you can just see, I'm now able to just check all the different tests, of course, where there are some things um, also benchmarked against this, and yeah, this is really, really good, like if you really wanna test your device like this, then this is definitely the way to go, uh, of course, have in mind that this test will really, really, really put a lot of stress on your phone and wow, OMG, I can tell you, it really still feels so hot. Even here on the surface, all right, see here, 48, I can only imagine what happens here inside, the phone still feels crazy hot, 49, all right, 42, and you can also see how much battery was drained, all right, so this is indeed a very 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 aggressive test it, of course uh, it does really use all the resources and you can see even the temperature guys from 43 going to here and that's kind of normal because this again is really a very graphically intense test some things are rendered off screen some things are on so on and off screen and you can just see the ones that are off screen of course they have a higher um, fps uh, and you can just see like it was almost shy of 50 celsius even in the beginning, right, um, the test that we have been doing with low resolution, even here you can see that the tool itself is gonna tell you that it's getting, getting really hot. So I'm gonna leave uh, this for you to see. All the scores are going to very slowly go down and if you have a phone with HGM 3 then you're more than welcome to compare with the results that I'm getting, right? You can just see now the low level test, the tessellation, the special test. It is really, really a lot of uh, things going on there. And now again, if you wanna compare, probably not the best thing here because they are running some of the older devices there, but nevertheless, this has been this test. I really uh, hope that you enjoy a video like this. If that's the case, don't hesitate. Again, sub for the channel, guys. More to come this week, so keep watching. Stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. VST over and bye.